so much deepak and uh, apologies everyone i was just facing some uh, bandwidth issues um, deepak humphrey i hope you guys can hear me fine and uh, see me fine as well so and and deepak thank you so much for introducing freshworks uh, to to our audience today as as deepak mentioned um, uh, we are a multi product uh, software as a service sort of product portfolio company and one of the products that we feel very proud of and we have in our kit is fresh service now fresh service uh, in in uh, layman terms is uh, it service desk software which actually helps you helps your it teams to basically enable your employee base with any of the it needs uh, raising the tickets routing them to the right person on the basis of the skills availability and so and so forth so that's the entire right size service management solution that you have and through the course of this uh, presentation we will also see uh, towards the end uh, what are the other capabilities and what are the other features that fresh service has which might be of some use to you and you may want to actually explore it but uh, the focus for this session and why all of us are here is this report from hackett research now who is hackett research uh, that is uh, the first question that you may have now hackett research uh, that's uh, hackett group has completed it's, it's an intellectual property based strategic consulting and leading enterprise benchmarking uh, benchmarking company which basically works with a lot of leading global companies uh, the hackett group has completed more than 17850 benchmarking studies which is close to 18000 across the globe with major corporations and governments you you name the um, you know corporation which is in you know the top of a uh, fortune 500 or who is who and they would have a benchmarking study done for them for this particular research report um for the 2021 edition of the annual key issues study uh, they basically interviewed executive management uh, management and leaders from finance human resources it procurement as well as other divisions across the globe and through a combination of i would say mid size as well as large enterprises and that the the research or the survey was actually done towards the end of 2020 asking them about what is the key priorities or things that they see in 2021 for the it respondents and that is what we are going to focus today in the next uh, you know uh, 15 60 minutes where they actually focused solely on what are the it related issues or opportunities that the teams have or organizations have for 2021 and beyond from it respondents perspective two third of the companies were actually headquartered in north america but around 8% were actually from europe and 26% was from other regions so that was the mix of the audience that they interviewed in terms of the size 23% had annual revenues greater than 1 billion usd 16% of them had revenues between 500 to 1 billion and majority of them were actually uh, 60% of them were actually below 500 million revenue uh in in, uh, in in that kind of mix so if you really see from large corporation to mid size and small scale as well as from uh the the hierarchy side of things uh like from from various you know uh, regions as well us europe and rest of the world including of africa they actually tried to bring in the global perspective to this entire research report and from there uh what i'm actually now going to do is to just introduce the high level stats uh which uh, which uh, this report has found and this research has found and also then get to the experts uh, that we have on the panel to basically check with them what they think about this and in between we will also do some polls so as to check your opinion the audience opinion on what they feel about a certain uh, question that was asked in the research report to the respondents and we will go through that too but for now let me just introduce the top 3 uh insights that we have received from this report the first one is what is the key priority in terms of the ranking and uh, that is the question that was there and what are the uh, basically enterprise objectives that organizations carries if you really see this is a standard you know top 10 priorities uh, you know slide that you would have most of the things would be similar or would be you know making sense to the it department and it teams and yourself as well what i really want to highlight here is three things you see the enterprise digital transformation that has moved uh, from seven places from seven place to second and uh, the pandemic that we all been through and still you know kind of struggling with that thankfully there is vaccine now and it that there looks to be it, it uh, an end to it but then this entire pandemic the virtual 
uh, workforce, uh, the the you know sort of uh, accelerated digitization that we have seen, all of that has actually put and pushed digital transformation as one of the key agenda on any of the CIOs or IT leader out there. The second thing that you would see, which is a new entrant in the top 10 priorities is remote worker. How to maintain the efficiency and product productivity of the employees and also ensure that the networks are up and running while they are working uh, through remote locations. And the last one is, uh, I, I think uh, that is certainly, I would say, uh, a priority which is getting deprioritized now, um, which is cost takeout and efficiency improvement. I think um, many of the organizations have realized that cost efficiency is certainly one part, but then the ROI mindset, uh, because it's very important that when you get into such unprecedented situations like this COVID pandemic, how your technology, how your teams can actually keep the torch on, keep the flame on, continues to work and drive the business. And that is where people have realized that more than the cost efficiency is the ROI game, return on investment game, which is the talk of the town and which is the new yardstick, I would say it wasn't new, but I think it has just taken a new priority in everyone's mind, including of the IT audiences. The next one is a busy slide, but then let me help you read through it and navigate through it. The question one, uh, the, the question or the analysis was that if there are new technologies, digital transformation and all of that is coming in, what is the adoption looking like currently? And what is the growth projections that, that we are witnessing? So if you really see the broad three, you know, um, technology areas, infrastructure technology, which is nothing but everything cloud, right? From your products to platforms to infrastructure, you can see that almost everybody is actually, you know, playing with cloud or trying cloud. Uh, either in a small scale through pilots or all, or through a large enterprise level project. So 93% and 78%, which is majority of the respondents and markets are actually on cloud already. And uh, from growth projection, which is uh, on the right hand side, you can see that it is one of the highest 25% uh, is, is what they are expecting to grow in 2021 alone. From the next technology set, which is data related technology, I think it's all about analytics. It's all about, you know, data visualization, making uh, while there is a lot of data, but then making sense of data, getting the actionable insights and so on and so forth, you can see that there is still, you know, some room. Uh, it's not as um, high on adoption as the cloud would be, but then this is certainly the next best with 80% or near about 80% people already trying to it. Uh, similarly, the growth projections are uh, lower to the cloud. I think when it comes to cloud, that's the first preference followed by the deep analytics or the data visualization uh, software or the technologies that people invest in. The third one, which I feel is still in the nascent stage, but that's how the curve looks like, which is smart automation. So chatbots, uh, virtual assistants, your AI, all of that actually is lumped into it. And you would also see that uh, uh, the, the combination of pilot versus uh, large scale projects. So a lot of uh, organizations today are in the pilot mode. And that is where you would see that uh, green color being really more than the blue color. And from a growth perspective also, it's uh, hovering around 8 to 15%, which means that this is the next wave and it's certainly going to catch up as we move forward. Now, while, while this talks about how the digital adoption across various technologies are actually kind of happening and taking a shape, the next slide also talks about uh, a quick format, I, I think the numbers are not readable because of the font style, but then let me help you with the numbers and let me also help you with the slide, how to read that up. So the question was again, how, if, if the technologies are actually, you know, kind of taking uh, a precedence, uh, how this uh, is in comparison with uh, the legacy applications and the other details. So for example, when it comes to legacy, the question was that how many, uh, so th the options were that, uh, did it meet the expectations? Uh, uh, if yes, uh, was it falling? Has it exceeded? So, so the red bar that you see is falling on expectations. The green bar in between that you see is met expectations and the lighter green is, or, or the grass green is basically exceeded. So if you see legacy applications, it's not exceeding. It's certainly meeting for majority of the audience, but when it comes to cloud, 19% uh, of them or nearly 20% have said that it has certainly exceeded their expectations. And I personally feel that the kind of situation that we all been through, this 90% would certainly be higher and higher as the years come in. Uh, from chatbot perspective, as I said, uh, majority of the audience in the previous slide, we saw 
Majority of them are actually toying with the idea of chatbots, virtual assistants, AI, and whatnot. So there is a mixed response to it, uh, whereby 40% of them are saying that they, they didn't uh, meet the expectations, but 50 to 60% are saying that it not only met, but then also exceeding the expectation. So it's interesting time for us to basically see how virtual assistants, chatbots are going to take shape. And remaining is self-explanatory, so I'm not going to take a lot of time and not going to hold you uh, from listening from uh, from uh, listening the, to the expert opinion of our panel. Let me now dive into the um, panel discussion. And as I said, uh, I would certainly want to uh, basically start every section in this panel discussion now with a question. And that's a poll that we are going to have. The, and, and I would certainly appreciate uh, the entire audience who is here today to basically respond to the poll. This is exactly the same question that Hackett Research has actually asked to their respondents. And by doing this poll, what I really want to say is how, how we in Eastern Africa think about the IT prioritization and IT issues vis-a-vis -vis the global average. So here comes the poll number one. Humphrey or Felix, if anybody can uh, you know, help me with the first poll, that would be helpful. So the poll is already on and uh, you can see uh, the, the question is basically, you know, we have it's just understood that, you know, the IT security or cyber security is the number one priority. But then when it comes to the other priorities, what do you think of it? So the options are there. Uh, if uh, just select the option that you feel is the next best priority in, in your organization or in your perspective. Thank you, Martin. And Michael as well. Michael, thank you so much for joining in. All right, do we do we have some responses, uh, uh, Felix? Can we show the responses here? All right, so um, I, I'm not sure if everybody can see the responses, but then I can certainly do that. Perhaps um, I, I have uh, the speaker access, that's why. But if you are not able to as well, I'm just going to uh read the responses out for you so 24 percent. so basically i would say uh 35 percent has actually said that accelerate it digital transformation is the next best priority followed by acting as a strategic partner to the business becomes your uh, second priority uh followed by aligning it skills and talent to the changing business need and uh, uh, customer centricity and the last one is IT cost efficiency. So I think uh, when it comes to cost efficiencies, I think the, the world is uh, unanimous for the first time. There are very few matters on which the world would be unanimous. And I'm glad to see that the cost efficiency is something which is sort of getting deprioritized in many, many uh, markets, including of Eastern Africa and Kenya market as well. That is what I actually see. Now, coming to that, if we really see how the world has actually seen that. So for us, our number one priority after securing data and systems is basically accelerating digital transformation, which is point number three here. Uh, in fact, uh, point number five here, accelerate IT digital transformation. That is the second most priority that the group has felt. And I personally feel that uh, these are the market nuances, if you really ask me, because if you ask somebody in the US or in, in the little mature markets whereby there is a lot of IT investments which has already happened, perhaps for them it is it is uh, it is done and dusted thing. But for markets like Africa or Middle East or for those you know other markets where we still have a lot of room to grow and a lot of you know uh, modern IT um, infrastructure to be placed, I personally feel that IT digital transformation has to be one of the key key objectives for all the IT departments uh, out there. I think uh, there, as I said, number six is improve IT cost efficiency, which this group also felt the same. Uh, and now with, uh, with the new results, I think the IT skills and talent uh, aligning both of them with the business needs is also very articulative and is very uh, important to this group too. So I think if you really see the top five, the order for the top five remains more or less same which certainly tells us that the, the pain or the opportunities that the global audience is feeling is somewhat similar. The question that I have for the panel and the first question from, from, uh, from my side, 
as what according to you should be the top three objectives for the IT teams in Eastern Africa. We already saw that there is a little reprioritization uh, in terms of the responses from the audience. And it is very important that we, we see how uh, Eastern Africa or how the markets like Kenya and Nigeria behaves um, uh, with respect to the IT requirements for 2021 and beyond. So I would like to start this question with Martin. Uh, so what do you think of the top three priorities, Martin? Thanks, thanks. Yeah, so so no, this is uh, fascinating and it's, it's great to see, um, you know, that the, the, the feedback from, you know, you know, the participants and, um, you know, those, the, those here resonate with uh, the findings. I, I think I, I probably would stay too far from that. I think digital has been front and center in the last few months. I, I think um, probably from an organizational perspective, uh, I, I, I think of the top three as uh, first and foremost, getting digital literacy heightened in the organization. And, and I'm talking, you know, the digital um, speak, philosophy, way of thinking, um, you know, mobile fast, digital fast. And, and this is across the organization from, um, you know, from, from, from the board, business leaders to, to um, the rest of the organization. I think that that's a priority that, um, that, that we need to, um, that we need to push. Um, and, and I see that as a priority this year. So, secondly, will probably be, um, you know, the mm -hmm. aspect of your customers, you know, um, how much do we really know about our customers? I mean, do, do we do we have um, quantifiable objective data? So I think, you know, digitizing or, or rather uh, mapping out that customer journey, uh, you know, and, and being able to orchestrate that from from a data perspective and being able to understand, you know, who your customers are, how they interact and so on. Is going to be a big thing and i think it's it's emerged in the last year especially um when many businesses were forced to go online but um you wow. know you're probably struggling targeting your customers figuring out who to to tell what um and and then of course security and privacy that's a huge one and i think as a third one i mean um in being able to get the trust of your customers and your and and your stakeholders in in the digital space is is, is very critical. So, so I'd say those are my three sort of priorities for 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 the year ahead. Yeah. So okay, mine I'd put probably the top priorities. Of course, uh, cyber security and data protection would remain top for me. Uh, obviously, always important to ensure that uh, as much as you're pushing the digital transformation, to ensure that everything is secured and secondly in regards to the personal data of whichever clients or customers you're holding that you this is within whatever regulations or legislations with, that affect your industry and next for me would be automation a big part of now working from home is what we are seeing is you might see a change where we have smaller smaller workforce sitting in the office and then it's more dispersed so this physical dispersion also tends to bring up a lot of redundant work of constantly checking your email or certain processes which now need to be automated to free up uh, the time for staff to focus on their key objectives. I don't think anyone's key objective was to write 50 emails in a day. So the automation process, again, even just for IT departments to deal with support queries where, again, uh, this ties into what Martin had said about digital literacy. Right now, of course, one big risk with all working from home is the shadow IT. So how do you ensure that your staff are literate enough to handle certain support uh, queries for themselves, uh, or the, what you consider FAQs, where do they have somewhere where they can log in, see how they can troubleshoot the issue before they escalate it to IT? Of course, that again does free up a lot of time and this can be handled through automation. I think thirdly and most importantly, uh, would be just IT becoming a revenue center. Right now, everyone's talked about the transformation and supporting business. I think it's time now for IT to take a piece of the business and now actually drive in revenue for the business as opposed to supporting other other stakeholders within the business who actually bring in this revenue. Yeah, I think that's just those are my three. I think it's the time for the next poll. Uh, so. I think we've we've got a we've got an idea of what are the 
ki uh, yeah thank you so much felix so ladies and gentlemen there is a poll that is in front of us which is what would be your most important it initiative for 2021 uh, request you all to sort of uh, register your responses uh, whether it's revise automate workflows or improve ability of data to enable business value upskill reskill it staff to better support business needs improve enablement of business resiliency or reduce technology complexity so these are your these are your options request you all to take some time and uh, and register your responses so these are the most common it transformation initiative uh, initiatives planned for 2021 so whether it's uh, revise automate workflows to so we have the we have it in the order of percentage that it's been voted for so basically the number one priority uh, initiative the, for 2021 seems to be the revise automate workflows to reduce manual dependencies i think we spoke about that earlier as well um, and improve and the second one seems to be like the improve ability of data to enable business value so these two seems to be so basically it's uh, it's about automating workflows and improving ability of data to any uh, to improve uh, uh, business value so these two seems to be the top priorities now i'd like to go to the presenters i mean the panelists to see what they think uh, of of the same uh, thing so what uh, so so uh, to this is to martin and to michael what can IT leaders to do to make these initiatives successful, right? Um, that's the next uh, thing that we need to come to, we are coming to. So Martin, I think I'll put this out first to you so that you can give your uh, opinions on this. <laughs> uh, right, thanks. Thanks, Deepak. Um, so uh, I thought it was a good question. Um, perhaps from, from our perspective and, um, and, and, uh, probably is, is, uh, leading off from a point that uh, Michael had made on making IT a revenue center um, is it's a value center, you know, rather than, you know, have it, you know, transforming from, from the current perception as a cost center is, is, is get the culture right. I think if we can, if we can elevate or have initiatives that can elevate the digital literacy of the entire organization. You know, I came following off my earlier point, um, you know, promote agility and the, you know, approach to experimentation, get, get, get that mindset of, of, of being able to, to build, um, you know, innovative solutions to problems that, you know, the business itself or its customers are, you know, or challenges have encountered. And, and probably this leads to the second one around automation. I think I think there's a massive opportunity to automate. Um, there's great, um, you know, automation platforms out there now and tools um, that can help you automate workflows and, um, you know, very redundant things that Michael had mentioned, uh, especially in, in, in the current setting where the teams are distributed. That's a big opportunity to be able to 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 save on costs and and even uh, identify new revenue opportunities um and and then finally perhaps is the point about getting the right tools and technologies you know if you can if you can um you know if if a business has identified its its priorities and 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 um, or, or, pay, or pain points i think it's worthwhile investment to to get the right tools and technologies to empower your teams to enable the organization to achieve you know the benefits that uh, digital has to offer so i, I think I, I think to i'll probably position these are the three Key things that IT leaders can do to to make the initiative successful. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's that. I, I probably just then hand over um, the mic here. Now, now, thank 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 you so much, Martin, for uh, for those three tips. And uh, uh, like you said, is the culture or the mindset uh, which which comes on priority, followed by automation, and then finding the right tools which can enable this transformation. So. Well articulated, Martin. I'm actually not coming on uh, video stream just to save on the network bandwidth. So uh, please, uh, please um, excuse my um, video stream for that perspective. But um, Michael, over to you. Um, what are the 
what are the things that you feel um, can make these uh, initiatives a success? What are some of the pitfalls or what are some of the things that you have sort of experienced in your career, which, which, uh, which is best avoidable, if I may put it this way? Well, I guess one thing you don't want to avoid, uh, well, first of all, um, I'm quite in agreement with what Martin has said, especially the point on culture and the digital literacy. And one thing, especially in making this change to what we'd consider a distributed workforce, one common pitfall is that we tend to apply the same tools and techniques to sort of bring about this culture change, which is quite difficult mm -hmm. because, you know, you're working from home, the certain mindset as to how you do things at home, how you dress at home, how mm. how your mind functions and organizes things at home. At the same time, you have to have this culture that is supposed to drive up this IT initiative. So the, the real pitfall of that mm. is as much as the only time that culture takes effect into someone is when they are seated on their device and there is some some sort of tool or something happening on their device that that encourages this growth of this culture, whether it's on their mobile device or on a social platform or or somewhere on one of their production systems. So the, the, the challenge would be how do you get staff when they're not on their devices to build up this culture? Although, of course, I think uh, one thing we tried uh, was always to have uh, Saturday game nights for, for staff and Started off as trying to have the whole organization then broke off into different clusters depending on what games they liked. And guys actually got so used to this that until recently, at the start of this year, when people would ask, but shouldn't we start bringing back the physical sessions? And everybody had grown into that culture that now projects, projects would mm -hmm. take off and they would conclude with without you ever going to the office or meeting anyone physically. So so I think that pitfall of just figuring out how to keep stuff uh, embedded into your culture during uh, while there's working distributed. Of course, again, with what Martin said in regards to the tools, I think right now everyone's key focus when they're picking tools shouldn't be a tool that you want, uh, that you can roll back into some sort of a centralized tool. You don't uh, now tools that, uh, the tools that you're going to use can work both remotely and centrally, and probably more so that they, whoever who's providing these tools has a plan to upscale them or to even build them much more efficiently for remote work because there's a lot of uh, benefits for the remote work as we are seeing. And probably having a hybrid or either remote work would mean focusing mostly to grow the organization in a remote work style as opposed to this is a temporary situation. So let's invest on something temporary, then we'll revert back to putting everything under one roof, yeah. So, so Michael, uh, I, I think what, what Michael and Martin, both of you are actually you know, alluding to is the fact that coming up with initiatives is one part, but then is the culture, is the mindset and the right tools, which actually makes any initiative a success across any organization. So if, if with that said, I think uh, this is a great uh, summary of uh, all, the, all the you know great examples that you shared. Let me move to the next question and uh, begin that with a poll. Um, so so uh, to the audience, uh, the next poll is coming your way, Felix. I'm free if you guys can actually get us the poll. See, we, we already discussed about the objectives uh, previously. Then we went into some of the initiatives that uh, somebody can take uh, in the RIT organization. The third piece, which is equally critical, that you take those objectives, initiatives, but then how do you measure them? What are some of the KPIs that you would want to do uh, or, or want to consider to measure the efficiency of these, uh, these, these initiatives? Okay, so the question is, uh, uh, question is actually on the screen and so are the options. What do you think is the most important KPI is it uh, you know the uh, is it in the area of business operation stability or business resiliency as we call it? Is it uh, digital business transformation or cybersecurity incident reporting, impact to the bottom line or contribution to the job growth of the organization? So we'll just give it uh, some more time. And uh, while and then thank you so much to all who have actually started. Uh, submitting their responses to the poll. 
while the poll responses are still being captured, let me just uh, offer the summary to you. In fact, Felix, if you, if you don't mind just uh, showing these results, I think that would be helpful as well. The results as I see it, 36%, um, almost 40% now are actually preferring the progress on digital business transformation, which simply means that everybody is now trying to prioritize on business transformation and not only prioritize, but also trying to see how it can be measured through the use of KPIs in this uh, particular uh, process. Uh, the second next is uh, business operations stability continuity. I think that has been a very traditional sort of KPI area for any of the IT organizations there. Uh, how the apps are, uh, you know, uh, what's the uptime, uh, how the business is running smooth and stable, and especially when everybody is working through remote, uh, it makes even more sense uh, to basically start uh, capturing it and capturing it on, on an ongoing basis. Um, then I would say there is a you know tough tie between the remaining three. I would say uh, again 13, 15 percent each. Cybersecurity incidents uh, impact to top line as well as to bottom line. Now let me switch to the uh, to the to the uh, report and tell you what the respondent uh, respondents have actually felt about it. So like like us, I think. Uh, the top two uh, priorities that you see uh, is exactly the same that uh, the audience has responded to. It's just that for us, the order is digital business transformations comes at the top priority for this group. But even if you see for the global respondents too, it's not much of a difference. So it's 62% uh, or the highest is actually on business resilience. The second one is um, progress on digital business transformation. And I think these are the two critical components that have taken place in any of the IT organization today across the globe. So the question that I have for my panel, both for Martin and Michael, I, I, I would not really you know, ask uh, Michael and Martin on what they think on the top KPIs, even though that's the part of the question, but then in the interest of time, I rather want to check with them is what is the right success measure for capturing these KPIs? For example, if we say that Progress on digital business transformation is something that we all felt that is one of the you know, most prominent area that needs to be captured, that needs to be tracked. What should be some of the goals or KPIs which can actually tell us that whether the team, whether the organization has gone the right uh, progress on the uh, various business transformation initiatives that have been taken, or for that matter, on the stability and continuity. Martin, since I see you on, on on right now, so over to you for this question, and then we will move to Michael as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's yeah, that's a tricky one. <laughs> sure. Yeah, um, I, I think metrics are always um, yeah slippery slopes, um, especially since um, it can sometimes be subjective. I, I think we we live in a in a you know fast transforming world and. And um, I think it's important to know that you know we we we're sitting on the right horse, um, you know, while while traveling this world. And and I think um, perhaps the underlying thing is our flexibility. I think we need to be flexible and and um, and and creative too in how we measure the right things within our organizations. I know we've had traditional metrics that you know have worked in the traditional IT setup or um, technology as it's as it's perceived to be um that that may not be the right fit yeah so for instance how do you how do you measure innovation how, how do you how do you measure mm -hmm. level of trans transformation or pace or progress in in, in that space so I, I i think probably the point i'm making is we 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 need to we need to have an honest conversation um, amongst ourselves on the right things to measure. Um, um, you, you know, there's this, I, I think Facebook once had this, um, I don't know if they still have it, um, you know, one of the philosophies around uh, moving fast and breaking things, you know. Um, so for instance, you could measure, you know, how many experiments uh, is your organization undertaking with customers and, 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 and even the rate of failure. Sometimes that can actually uncover uh, this 
this intention to to push the envelope and think outside the box mm -hmm. which I, th I think would be would be key would be key for organizations but then again also having the right tools is um i i, th I think is a is a is a stepping stone to that it's, it's 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 a nice entry point if you have the right tools people can measure their work online and how they're they're being able uh, how they're, they're they're performing that that can enable you start getting some of the data that could help you arrive at the right uh, metrics. So I think, uh, let me leave it there. I think there's just some general comments on, 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 on KPIs, um, but it would be very interesting to hear also what, you know, everyone else thinks. Sure, no, no, thanks so yeah. much, Martin. I think uh, one thing that you rightly pointed out is, is, the, is the courage or the flexibility to experiment I think uh, no KPI or nothing uh, uh, of a measurement can actually, you know, kind of measure the, the kind of flexibility that an organization can offer. So how do you basically create an environment where people can basically uh, experiment and, and do not afraid to be, uh, you know, do not afraid uh, to be fail on that. So I think that's a, that's a very, very nice insight from you. Michael, um, the same question for you, but then in, in, in your mind or in your experience, what are some of the KPI measurements that you have seen which has kind of worked? Uh, and and uh, especially with this digital transformation or business transformation, as I am seeing some of the you know audience making a note in the Q&A. By the way, just, just a side note to all the audiences. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please put it in the Q&A feature on on the on the uh, on your browser and we would be happy to take those questions and i already see a comment from georgina on uh, kind of uh, switching the word digital transformation and business transformation so i absolutely agree with you georgina i think when we are talking about digital transformation we are talking in the context of business i don't think we will be or anybody you know who who has um, in the in the professional parlance and even for this group our digital transformation is useful only when it is uh, uh, kind of pushing the boundaries for the organization and making it uh, making the business grow. So uh, you would have actually noted that the top line and bottom line impact across all the uh, you know three or four sort of steps that we have seen. So business is integral, and um, digital transformation uh, for business transformation is what we are actually talking about. So. From, from that perspective, uh, Michael, I'm coming back to this question on the KPIs. What are some of the KPIs that you have measured or that you would suggest measuring to address or to, to sort of track this transformation? Well, there are quite so many KPIs you could use, of course, depending on what your goal is, what industry you're in. Uh, what I prefer to do is to say, do not be data-driven when it comes to these KPIs. If you're going to make your decisions purely based on the data you get, as of, so that means the exact data you receive is the exact data you use to make the decision. So, if you're if one of your one of your indicators was, for example, forty percent reduction in something, and you say mm -hmm. we hit forty percent, so we've we've met our target. Well, that works, but I believe that's a very short term look at it. So I prefer an approach that's called data data informed. So data informed is where you are aware of your current performance is at 60 percent you need to get it to 40 percent but more importantly how can you optimize that 40 percent again to a 20 percent so one, one good example of this um though not, i don't know if everyone would, would understand this so uh this online games people play so we have games which have which actually look at how you click how soon you click how fast you move the frame rates you're using and a lot of one of these games are uh, very popular online game that's called uh, rainbow siege actually found out by how people are playing what new weapons you introduce into the game mm -hmm. and this was a data informed move as opposed to a data driven move as a as a data driven move the, the what they would have seen is that 60 percent of our players prefer this weapon but data informed is so 60% of our players prefer this weapon because this weapon is the only one that works best for them because of the internet connection. So how can we put in a weapon that can somehow deal with the lag issues that we have? How can also at the same time not interfere with the esports platform? So this was a this was a data informed 
So, so this KPI wasn't set in stone, so it was data informed as opposed to data driven. And I think all KPIs should be data informed. Thank you. Oh, wow, this is, uh, I, I, to be very honest with you, Michael, I never thought um, in that detail where data driven and data informed, I was just kind of, you know, uh, using them without even thinking what what would it actually means and such a great example, Michael. Um, so so basically, what you are saying is the KPI are there, KPIs are there, the goals are there, but then just just uh, you know do not fall into the data driven sort of conversations. It has to be uh, as you said, it has to be uh, towards the ground. It has to be something which the market wants which the users want and it has to be real to the market and the needs of the market so thanks so much michael for that and martin for these wonderful uh wonderful suggestions and sharing your experiences and some beautiful examples i'm i am just looking at the clock right now and i think we are at the top of the hour but i would certainly want to uh, keep uh, keep some um, you know time for us to basically take any questions if we may, may have so Anybody who is uh, listening to us and interested in asking the questions, please feel free to do that on the on the Q and A button. While we ask for the questions, let me quickly get into the subsequent section. For me, the subsequent section is uh, basically I, I would, as I promised in the beginning of the uh, session, here is what more fresh service can offer beyond to being uh, just IT service desk. I think uh, the one of the utilities that we have seen for our product is. This is an extendable service management desk, which means that it's just not for IT, but your marketing, your HR divisions, your finance facilities, anybody and everyone, all of the departments can actually come. Uh, and in fact, uh, we drink our own champagne to that extent. So we, we use the same product internally and we call it Lighthouse. So from, for example, from HR perspective, you would have a host of uh, services that uh, HR would offer. So if I need, for example, an address proof or uh, something related to my employment uh, in terms of documents, uh, I can simply go on Lighthouse, which is fresh service and raise a ticket for the HR department. Uh, internally, it would be routed to the right HR team and the right person, and they would actually work on that ticket, give me a resolution for that ticket and close it out. So the same ticket management, the same similar workflow, but then for different uh, units of the organization and that is where we feel that this extendable service management is something which comes very handy for not just for your IT teams but also for your other divisions uh, then you of course have uh, you know the collaboration analytics uh, Freddy which is our AI and automation tools all of that uh, kind of packed uh, into this product which is available on cloud and which is uh, also available across the only thing that you would need is uh, an active connection or internet. I know there is a comment that has been made um, by Dr. Yasin, and uh, the comment is basically the availability and affordability of technology and tools. I think if you really ask me, and if I may take this question, and um, you know, with the advent of cloud technology, the availability part has been rest. So uh, has been rested. So uh, to an extent whereby the only thing that you would need is to basically get an active uh, connectivity. And just because of the fact that you just need active connectivity and a working browser, that is all what you need in order to access the data or access the platform. So the software as a service or platform as a service, these services which are on the cloud are basically ensuring that they are available 24 by seven when the customer needs or when the employees need it the best. So, uh, and then I would tie it back to the, the research uh, report and the findings too, whereby in the beginning we saw how cloud technology is being adopted. Almost 90 plus percent market has already, you know, kind of experimented with cloud and uh, majority of them are uh, sort of, you know, seeing exceeding expectations with the implementations. So that availability is at risk. Affordability, I would say it's a very subjective terminology affordability for an organization is also from the perspective of whether you just want to keep it for IT or you have uh, uh, you know um, for example in the context of the ECM uh, ESM sorry that is extendable service management as I mentioned if there is just one platform which could actually you know do uh, justice to various other organizations and kind of offer you a host of services then I think uh, the affordability or the ROI of that platform becomes quite handy for you 
Uh, there are many products out there in the market, but I can certainly talk for fresh service and especially in the context of um, Africa market too. Uh, we basically kind of commissioned Forrester uh, to do a total economic impact study. Basically, that's uh, Forrester's, I would say, a proprietary model on which they uh, they select and talk to various customers of our product. Um, and then it's, it's, uh, the sanctity of this report is as much that they do not even share who they are going to speaking with and, and so on and so forth. So the, that report from Forrester actually saw the ROI for fresh service to be in line of 3x. So more than 3x of the return on the investments and with a payback period of, I think it was six months or less. So basically, whatever investments were made, uh, our customers have seen 3x more returns coming in the form of and through the discussion and conversation, we have seen that how cost efficiency is not the right uh, perspective today. It's more of the ROI as affordable as any other technology could be. So I hope I address your question, Yasin. And if there are any other questions, we would be happy to take that. Uh, while I also pull up the last poll just to um, get uh, your interest, if any one of you is interested in to know and also to see a demo for fresh service, we would be more than happy to line you up with our um, technical team. Uh, who would be, you know, doing a demo for you. And in fact, if you're interested, we can do that. That's the last poll, if Felix and, uh, is, uh, you know, if you are interested, options are in front of your screen, just let us know. For now, if there are any other questions, we would be happy to take that. Otherwise, Humphrey, over to you. And uh, Michael and Martin, once again, thank you so much for uh, taking out time from your business yeah. schedule and jumping on to uh, share your uh, experiences on this panel. Yeah, for, for, for sure. Thank you thank so you. much, Michelle. Uh, despite uh, Murphy's talk kicking in, we have really uh, pushed uh, to at least have an invaluable session. There's just one more question that I think uh, Mr. Kimoi Kibet asked, and I think it's important that if you could uh, kindly consider to respond to it. It goes on the chat window. How does a CIO position these objectives amid the conflicting priorities of uh, the organizations? There has been a lot indeed of challenges, particularly last year. And now that organizations are purposing really to recover, I guess uh, Kipkemo is asking from that uh, context. Vishal, please. Sure, sure. sure. No, or any, any of the panelists. Thank yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kimoy, for mm -hmm. this question. Um, I, I, let me just uh, you know, rephrase this question and uh, ask uh, from our panelists. I think that would be the, uh, they are the experts on, on this field. So the question is basically, what would you do as a CIO or as the IT leader of the organization 
if your IT priorities are not matching up with the business priorities. So Michael Martin, I think that is a pertinent question and it's, it's a, a crossroad that many of us, not just the IT you know, departments or IT leaders, in fact, it's, it's true for me also in, in my marketing domain, whereby there are a few things which, which may not get aligned with the organization initiatives. How do you deal with that? What are some of the things that you would do which ensures that the uh, priorities are aligned? And if they are not, what are some of the things that you would do to ensure that it happens? Okay, uh, let me make it easier. Uh, uh, Martin, if you could respond to that question, I think that would be helpful. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yes, right. that's a loaded question. Eh? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think just the fact that there's conflict is a good thing um, because you know I think it's only when you know when there's tension that that the progress is made. Um, and the, 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 I, I, there's probably isn't one right answer. Um, I think education has a big part to play. We, we need to, um, and from the tech, uh, from the tech world, um, I think we need to speak the business language. Uh, if, if, if just to uh, have an analogy for it, uh, we, we need to be able to see the world as a CEO, um, as a board, as the CFO sees it, shareholders, be able to articulate the value you're bringing to to the table, and probably just echoing a point uh, Michael had made on 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 tech becoming a revenue center, um, and, and maybe this also then, then points to even the distinction between digital transformation and business transformation. Um, you, you know, if if you're going to transform your business, you can only go so far as to as 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 that container of the business permits. But if you if you're able to embrace what's possible with digital, then you can actually change your business. I, I mean, you might even discover you're in the wrong business. You know, so I think it's 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 a journey, and and a, it, it's a it's a call to CIOs, to tech leaders, to to articulate what value they bring to the table. Make, make the business understand and understand where the shoe pinches for the business so that you can talk the right language and be able to position um, um, the, the, you, you have, have a value first discussion so that your priorities can then be aligned with the business. Um, yeah, so, so maybe those are just some remarks, but I think um, it's, 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 it's open to experimentation again. But yeah. I think you just have to confront it. Mm. Uh, no, thanks. Thanks so much, Martin. I think uh, you absolutely rightly pointed out. I think, and then, you know, speaking from personal experiences uh, and especially about this conflict or dilemma, there are times when we wouldn't be able to get the consensus, but then you, uh, because you are the subject matter expert or because you are uh, in, in charge of that particular thing and you feel very promised about certain solution or certain initiative, at times, the approach that I had taken is to do a small pilot at a very small scale, a very miniature version of that initiative, run that, make it successful, show the results, and then sort of take it back to the business or the other stakeholders and tell them that, okay, within the limited scope of it, we were able to see this kind of result and we are coming to you to scale it. I think that has always worked for me and I'm sure for many of our uh, you know, colleagues out here, uh, so the the mantra is uh, start small, uh, make it successful, think big, and scale it. That is what I would actually put. Uh, uh, if there are any more questions, we would be happy to take that. Uh, otherwise, any final comments, uh, Michael, Martin, any one of you, or Humphrey, if there is any more question, we would be happy to take that. Otherwise, to all the audiences, thank you so much for you know coming in today and uh, uh, spending your time with us. I hope uh, your, your last one hour was worth spent with us. And uh, the, the report that I was talking about is already in the handouts uh, available for you to download. And if you need any further assistance or if you have any further questions that uh, you feel Freshworks team would be, of, uh, uh, would be able to help you on, feel free to reach out to us from or, or through the CIO team and we would be uh, happy to actually address any of the queries that you may have.